My name is Adrian Urno. I work for Open Session. I'll be hosting this uh, webinar. I think you can all see my screen right now, the presentation. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so welcome to this webinar. It's the last webinar of the year for us. Uh, it's about um, online security for online communities. And uh, we're going to record this webinar. So um, yeah, I think in any case, the attendees are not um, going to show up in the screen. So I think that's fine. But we'll also share the presentation and the webinar with you uh, afterwards. So uh, just to get started, I quickly wanted to give an introduction to Open Social for those of you who um, don't know who we are. Uh, Open Social offers organizations this uh, opportunity to create their online community. And we provide them with the platform to do that. Uh, it's a platform built especially for member engagement and member management. Um, the online communities really help organizations drive digital transformation, manage uh, communities more effectively in the online space, bring people together, um, activate and engage members, and also drive certain organizational goals. This is especially the case with um, organizations like the UN or the European Commission that use Open Social, uh, as well as NGOs um, and volunteering organizations such as Greenpeace that use Open Social to um, engage and organize their volunteers online. So um, just a quick introduction to the topic. Um, with this kind of growth of online communities, there's also you know, increased um, risk. Uh, we are seeing especially an increase in cybersecurity um, uh, risks in the, uh, in the web. And this brings a lot of problems, not only for um, community members, but also for the organizations who manage these communities, as well as for the community platforms at large. So communities are, are often a very vulnerable target for these kind of um, threats, both because they have these multiple entry points, um, especially public communities, but also because they are very um, rich in terms of personal data that can be uh, stolen. But of course, I'm not the expert on this topic, which is why we invited Bram Tenova and Igor Kantor to share their knowledge and expertise on this topic. So just a quick introduction. Um, Bram is Open Social's Chief Technical Officer and Acting Security Officer. Uh, he is responsible for implementing and maintaining Open Social's information security management system. Um, he recently oversaw the the um, the certification process, the ISO certification process of Open Social. Um, Igor Kantor is the CEO of Eterasec, a cybersecurity firm he co-founded with this vision to provide a unique blend of security and software engineering expertise to organizations. He also helped with this uh, ISO certification and worked with Bram on it. So I'm very excited for the discussion we will have today. Um, during the talk, you can also drop some questions in the chat or the Q&A section on Zoom. Uh, we'll also have an opportunity at the end to ask a couple of more questions. So without further ado, I would like to kick it off by asking Bram um, if he can perhaps tell us a bit more about this recent ISO certification process at Open Social and um, also how it impacted the security of the clients who use Open Social as a platform for their communities. Right, two large questions maybe even, uh, but maybe uh, to, to start with uh, like the ISO certification process. So indeed, like we um, we recently got accredited um, for ISO 27001, uh, which, is, uh, which is all about um, implementing a information security management system. So really having the tools, the processes, the procedures and, and everything in place to make sure that you keep data secure, right? Like not just of like the organization, but also of your clients, your customers and everything that is coming in and, and how you deal with this in, um, well, in HR, in, in software development, uh, in sales, in marketing. It, it touched upon like our whole uh, organization, which is also one of the reasons why we actually did this because we all have always taken security very, uh, very seriously. Um, and for us, logical next step would be indeed to get certified for this and, and to get to another higher level on, on, on this. Um, so we actually had the audit, I think, mid 
mid, yeah, mid, mid November, and it took actually six days to complete. So we went through all the evidence that we prepared and showing uh, the auditor in this case that, um, uh, well, how we implemented this and, and what kind of controls we have in order to ensure that uh, that data is uh, and information is secure in open social. Um, yeah, and if we're talking about like clients, that's obviously also impact, and that's one of the also reasons, obviously, why we did this, is that we want to ensure and, and and give proof to our clients that what we're doing with their data is is um, uh, we're handling this responsible and in a secure manner, um, because any organization has data they want to protect, right? Like even if you have like an online community where everybody can sign up, the data behind this, if if this is like emails that are being sent out or uh, internal com com uh, communication between members, like all of the data is important. But also in, in sales process, if we're talking about different uh, uh, proposals that we're sending or talking to, to each other over emails, uh, like a lot of the data is confidential um, and you need to uh, well, treat it as confidential and, and take this uh, in, in a very serious manner. We, as you mentioned, like we run community software for United Nations, European Commission, but really all these organizations, smaller organizations, well, like all of them have um, have a need for security for, for their data. Um, and that's also why, um, why I think like uh, ISO certification 27001 was for us actually a good way to, uh, uh, to evaluate what we already had, improve it and, and get, uh, get certified on this. This is also where uh, that ETERASEC helped with their, uh, with their consulting uh, on this. On that point, I would maybe like to also ask uh, Igor if you can share a little bit more about uh, ETERASEC and uh, what you do. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, are you, yeah, I think you want to share your screen as well. Uh, yeah, uh, but I have it disabled somehow. Okay, wait, I can enable it now. No, you should be able to share now. Yes, uh, so you should see my screen uh, now. Uh, so yeah, my name is Igor. I'm one of the co-founders of uh, Interasec. We are a cybersecurity consulting company um, helping clients around the world with uh, cybersecurity from different angles, both from the software and product angle, as well as organizational cybersecurity angle. Um, the challenge we see on the, the problem we see on the market is that uh, cybersecurity is, is a very complicated topic for many smaller and medium companies. And it's becoming more hard and harder to retain good security talents. This is why we realize that the importance of accessing a good cybersecurity as a service uh, is very important nowadays. Uh, so with, with this vision, we also established our company and uh, um, um, and uh, Open Social uh, is, uh, I can say, one of uh, the good examples of uh, uh, our ideal customer profiles uh, being a security savvy company uh, on the one hand with enough security challenging challenges to solve. And at the same time, ready to improve and uh, diligently um, listening to what we recommend. So this has been a very good experience working with them. And I think it will also continue because um, as Bram said, we've just recently uh, got ISO 27 certification for open social. And right now we're also working on, the, on a more technical project for the open social product where we uh, do a technical pen test right now from the application point of view. So I think we still have a long way to, to go together. Um, from the services that we provide to the clients, uh, there are three groups of services, uh, security testing and audits. Uh, that's where we do a traditional pen test, network pen test, application pen test. That's what a lot of people nowadays already know and are used to these services. Uh, but we also do a cloud and uh, container security audits. That's also becoming extremely important nowadays because pretty much any application, modern application or system is hosted in the cloud and uses containers and so on. This is why security of it is essential really. 
So we also provide security consulting to developers. Um, this is more where we help uh, build software securely, not rely on the pen testers at the end, but uh, make it secure from the beginning. And we also have a third group of services, security compliance. That's where ISO 27 project fits in. Uh, in, in these services, we, um, we help clients build uh, security certification programs, sometimes also acting as their um, virtual chief information security officers, sometimes just guiding them how to build these programs. So um, yeah, that's, that's how we operate and where we are. But then I also maybe wanted to ask you um, just to say a little bit about why cybersecurity is so important at the moment. Um, uh, what kind of threats or challenges do organizations usually face, um, especially nowadays? Yes, so uh, probably this this week, uh, uh, everybody uh, got uh, another uh, confirmation how important cybersecurity is with this uh, recent Log4j vulnerability it's all over the news um, and it's it's called one of the biggest uh, vulnerabilities over the last decade or maybe two decades uh, but for me this is just another um, um, another sign another reminder how um, how fragile the, the more modern software world is and how quickly it can be, become insecure uh when you do not pay enough attention to your software engineering quality because at the end of the day it all comes down to this uh but talking on a more general level uh i think uh, today the one of the biggest uh, uh threats is still uh, ransomware uh this is also what what we hear a lot and uh, um, despite the uh, government's efforts, both in the US and Europe, it's it's still very active, um, and this is this is a big challenge for companies. Um, but uh, we, uh, we 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 also see the problem with uh, um, the the recent digitalization wave, because uh, this this rapid uh, switch to uh, remote work and work from home created also a lot of cybersecurity challenges for, for companies. That's what we also experience. Um, and uh, I think it's maybe not so much on the threat side, but on the challenges side, the regulation is also uh, becoming more and more strict. Uh, also with the GDPR, um, uh, with with the fines and uh, all the pressure from, from it, I think it's also uh, quite challenging for the company. So the companies really need to um, jungle this uh, and find this balance between uh, technical resilience um, and also compliance. Um, so this is this is a big challenge today. Uh, it's quite interesting because we often talk about open social um, in contrast to social media platforms as an own platform. Um, which means that the clients have a lot of uh, control um, over their own community platforms. And I wanted to ask Bram uh, if you can maybe say a little bit more about why it's important, especially for people with um, site manager roles or admin rights to be uh, extra vigilant when it comes to cybersecurity practices. Yeah, so as a, as a, like a site manager or a, a user with a higher uh, privilege in the community, that that implies as well that you have more um, uh, more things to break or uh, more things to configure, um, it, which can harm the community itself or a particular member, for example. If you don't look out for, uh, I guess, your basic uh, what, what we call like a cybersecurity hygiene. Um, so it, 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 we often talk about like uh, having like strong passwords, uh, two-factor authentication uh, where possible, uh, making sure you don't click on like phishing emails, uh, things like that. In the end, like it, like I think that a lot of the problems that you face now, even as it's like a site manager, it's it's even more important to uh, avoid uh, avoid like a bad hygiene in this case. So make sure that you have like strong passwords, two-factor authentication. 
uh, uh, things like that. Because in the end, like you have much more control over uh, what you can do in the in the community and and, and across like configuration settings um, uh, and, and you can obviously view more confidential data. So making sure that you have um, have your cybersecurity hygiene in order is uh, is very important. And I think that's also where we have, um, like we have, we offer like two-factor authentication, open social thing, things like these are are helping to uh, to address that. I think maybe one 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 small example that I discovered during the ISO twenty seven thousand one uh, process is that actually what we uh, if we're talking about like phishing emails, we discovered during uh, during this process that we every new employee that comes uh, working at open social in about one or two days after they start working and, and publish this on LinkedIn, they're getting uh, emails, phishing emails from, uh, well, from people trying to uh, trying to impersonate our CEO, trying to get them to click on links, which is quite nasty. But this is like a super simple example of if you tell people during onboarding, like you're gonna, you're going to get this, then they know upfront, okay, these are things that I need to watch out for. And it's just sometimes very simple things, with just knowing that you need to uh, need to look at this and take care of that. Um, it can already be uh, well, just something that you need really need to look into. It's not always that easy, no. Um, and it's quite interesting because when you when you're talking about this um, security hygiene, um, it's easy to just think of digital information, but I think there's also a big component that's not. Not digital. Uh, I know there's always the example of don't write your password on a on a post-it note and put it on your laptop. Um, I was wondering if if either of you could say a little bit about the non-digital side of cybersecurity. Igor, you want to take this one? Uh, non-digital side, you mean? Yeah, for example, you know, don't write your password on a piece of paper on your desk. Um, and uh, the um, sharing of docu documents, um, printed documents and things like that. Um, how does yep. that impact uh, cybersecurity practices as well? Yeah, so it's, uh, that, that's, that's a very good point. I think um, um, the, the problem is uh, that while there are many uh, technical hacks nowadays, zero days, whatever, sophisticated things, uh, Practically, a lot of attacks they start with uh, with the human factor, because uh, humans and site managers uh, are still humans. We're often uh, overloaded with with work, and um, um, and in in such conditions, uh, people tend to um, do some shortcuts and. Uh, uh, maybe uh, they have less attention to some security risks. Uh, and as you say, they can write a password on a piece of paper or something like that. Uh, or they can click uh, um, some link in the phishing email, which looks very legitimate. It's, you know, uh, at the end of working day, when your attention is, uh, is an energy level is low. So all, all this means that um, 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 these, this, this personal uh, cybersecurity hygiene uh, is is important everywhere, uh, but for site managers, it's uh, it, it's very important actually. Yeah, and I think like communicating about this, like also with writing, because I, there are people that do not use password managers, for example, and and indeed like have a notebook. Um, to, to a few years ago, my parents also had a notebook with passwords. Um, like they changed this also to a password manager, but just telling them about like these things, like it's not very obvious to everybody what 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 the security uh, um, security controls are that you have as a person. Um, that can be easy to use, easy to implement, but just sharing this information is already a huge uh, factor. Yeah. So. Um, and then Yes, go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry, continue. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and uh, in, in this context, uh, what is also extremely important is uh, just, you know, uh, um, the, the, if, if we talk about this, what it, does it mean to have a good cybersecurity hygiene? 
so first of all, it's uh, uh, having a good practices in credential management, uh, meaning uh, you should have a strong password. Uh, and when you want to have strong passwords, um, re remembering them and keeping them in the memory or in the paper is, is not uh, a way to go. So you need to have uh, a password manager uh, software. So these there are special uh, tools which can uh, store your passwords so that you don't have to remember them. And this one, um, um, this one measure alone brings so much, so much value to security because then people are not reusing passwords, which is a very common attack vector. Uh, since uh, when uh, one website leaks the passwords, normally attackers they try uh, to put these leaks, leaked passwords into other websites. And very often this, this simply works. And password managers is, um, is one way to prevent this because they give special alerts to users when they see uh, detect password reusage and so on. But also uh, two-factor authentication, um, something that is uh, very common today. It's a very powerful method because uh, password alone still is is uh, um, is not uh, a way to protect you when uh, um, when uh, when your computer is compromised for example or when you leak your 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 password somehow um, and finally also um, there are um, there are basic cyber cyber security hygiene on the workstation level so or laptop like the place where you work and having your operating system up to date, uh, not visiting bad websites, not installing some shady software, um, updating your software regularly. So these things maybe they seem to be um, a bit, you know, far away from uh, uh, from from security of community tools, but actually everything is very interconnected. So um, um, making your environment where you work more secure uh, is is actually also strengthening your um, your your system, your platform security as well as a site manager. Um, so maybe also something to add on the organizational level, Bram, if you want. Uh, um, that, that is also, I think, very impactful in terms of security. How how organization built their security and how this also influenced the personal practices of employees using the community platform. Uh, yeah, for, for, for sure. Like if you have an organization using a community, then 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 act, advocating about like security is, is very important. Like I think like the, what I mentioned, like our example of of where uh, people um, that the join open choice you get like attacked actually pretty pretty quickly like having like open communication about that and making sure that you have these controls in place to um, to inform for one but also to uh, to be able to monitor uh, if, if people like do not update their their machines can also help but that's really on like an organization level indeed uh, yeah and um Bram, on that topic i quickly wanted to ask you uh, in terms of having a um an online community especially a public one one that's open for people to join how important is it, how important is it to um, manage or control who signs up and who has access to the community once they sign up and um what what security practices can help there yeah that's that's a really good question so um it it all begins with the use case of the of the community right so if you have a community that is open and public it's a volunteering community well you want everybody to be able to sign in and you also want to have this barrier to be able to sign in and register and sign up like very low and uh, that obviously drives engagement and engagement is is something that is super important for a community i think that is also where sometimes it can feel that security measures or controls can uh, clash with uh well with, with, with things to like increase engagement for your community uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be so um, I, th I think for, um, well, depending on the use case of the community, you can have different things. So for one, uh, spam is one issue that you will face in, in your community. And this can also be phishing spam, right? Like there can be a malicious uh, community user 
that uh, sends uh, well phishing links to other uh, other community members that they then well click upon and this actually affects like the trust in the community itself and in the uh, in the organization behind this so having tools to detect this um, and, and and understand that hey oh, this user is spamming uh, spamming everybody with uh, uh, well with a malicious link is important uh, is important to have and have the ability to relay that information to the site manager to act upon this um, on the other hand having um, uh, a granular permission system that we have for example in open social is also quite interesting because you can um, what we currently have as an option is that we have people signing up but they don't have the uh, you can configure that you, they don't necessarily have the rights to create content or interact with content by publishing comments or posts, but they start in a level where they can just read, uh, like content, and once you verify that they're well, that they are who they say they are, um, albeit manually or, or automatically for some time frame, for example, then they can be upgraded to the next level, and this even though it, it, it impacts engagement to some extent, it has a, a limited impact um, uh, depending on the use case. And this can also help to prevent a lot of like these malicious users from interacting with your community because, you know, they can do a lot. So they'll just skip ahead and go to a community where they can do this or a different website where they can do this. Yes. So well, what what I would also like to add to what Bram said. So Bram also uh, touched very uh, good point about the context in which the tool is used. I think it's also extremely important for organizations to realize in which context their community tool is used, because there could be one one case when the community tool is used more for uh, some volunteering things, or maybe just for internal organization, like you know planning the parties or just chatting, um, that could be one scenario. Completely other scenario could be when the tool is used for sharing some innovative ideas inside the companies, which completely changes the um, the, the value for att attackers uh, to this data, because this then can be used for, um, for some insider information attacks or um, um, industrial espionage or things like that. So for organization, in, in my opinion, it's very important to, to think of this uh, community tools as, as some of their internal assets and clearly understand what kind of information is stored in this asset. And based on this, apply, um, um, apply organizational or technical measures to, uh, to protect it. Yeah, and I think like like maybe one 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 small thing still about like community um, uh, security in general. Like if we talk about like attacks on on websites like data leaks, and these are usually coming from um, uh, well SQL injections, for example, XSS attacks, uh, all, all these things that that are well relatively normal things that are happening on the on the web. These are often also automated. So having tools in place in front of your community that can block these requests and filter out these issues that will already solve uh, well majority of like these issues on on like security uh, level and Bram, you just mentioned uh, data leaks and i actually wanted to ask specifically you know what because you often see when it comes to community platforms or social media platforms that the big thing is data leaks uh, you know facebook often suffers from data leaks and um, linkedin has also had some historically disastrous data leaks um, and i quickly wanted to ask you you know why are data leaks so dangerous um, especially for uh, community platforms yeah so i think community platforms by essence have a lot of personal identifiable information mm -hmm. there's a lot of uh, there's often like address information name uh, connections with different people um e image your image right um they, they can be anything in there if you look at facebook um, I, I think there's like there was millions i think hundreds of millions of personal personal identifiable information that was uh, uh, that was collected there 
And these email addresses, for example, were then used to target other different sites, as also Igor mentioned, like these passwords that were um, um, uh, that, that people use. Like they try to log into different sites, and they know by then with this information to target you very specifically. So they may know that you have a Tesla at your home because you purchased a Tesla recently. Okay, well, I've got your home address. I know you have an expensive car. Um, well, let's uh, let's check out the neighborhood, right? And I think this is something that that has been recently. I'm not sure what what uh, leak that was, but this is something that happened in the in the Netherlands uh, a while ago, where the need was the information was leaked about like car owners. So criminals were targeting these expensive cars um, uh, specifically. So any data leak, uh, as I mentioned, I think in the beginning, like any any data that you own, like that, that is confidential, right? Like to unless you're public make it public you also don't start handing out uh, on the street flyers with your address like you want to keep that private to uh, just the people that you want to share this with data leaks well sensitive data blackmailing uh, uh, a criminal at, 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 well, if, if thievery etc can all happen in that case uh, but, but also if you look at like the blockchain for example there are a lot of stories about people having their uh, uh, their well their Bitcoin stolen because of a data leak from a different site. So and then they log into that one. So there's a lot of implications on well in in, in the internet financially as well, uh, but also um, also on um, uh, well on on a physical level where uh, people can can even start stalking you, right? Like there's. Uh, um, yeah, there are a lot of like these attempts, and and it's often not uh, not very nice. No. Uh, and obviously, like you have regulations, right? Like you need to have, need to make sure that you uh, that you regulate. So if you if you leak data, like you need to deal with the consequences and the fines uh, for that. So obviously, every organization wants to prevent that. So I have a, a very nice and challenging question um, from Mark in the chat. Um, he asks if one assumes virtually every human being already has a digital persona on the internet assembled over time by innumerable sources, is it really feasible to assure our users their personal data is secure? A difficult question. Do either of you want to answer that one? So skeptically, like like you already, yeah, so, sorry so to be so skeptical. Well, let like we can be we can be skeptical in that case because i think if we look at the internet how it evolved over well 20 20 25 years like um a lot of the data has been leaked in one or the other a database it like you cannot trust everybody every organization unfortunately that your data is being kept in a secure manner encrypted uh, etc some of these basic um, uh, web, web security um, uh, uh, standards have not been implemented by our organization. So yes, I I, I think users' yep. personal data is 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 is, is well is, is likely leaked on on uh, in one way or another. I think the important thing is that like if you have control of this data, how do you secure this yourself? Right, like you don't want to be the organization that uh, that 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 leaks that data and makes it even worse, right? Yeah, I think it's a, uh, I mean, just uh, commenting on the question, which is a very sober one. Uh, of, of course, I mean, in uh, in today's world, and uh, personally as a, a cybersecurity professional, um, I, I do realize that everything is is hackable. I mean, and we we all know that. But uh, I think what is important is to to realize uh, from whom you are protecting your data. Because um, that is uh, also very important. Because if you want to protect your data from a state-sponsored hackers, for example, then you know, let's be honest, forget about that, right? Uh, that's that's no way this, this is going to happen. But uh, if you're trying to protect your data from a uh, um, from your competitor, maybe who is not ready to invest uh, such amount of monies in in hacking you, then the a task suddenly becomes feasible and it is feasible to create a decent security that would stand um, stand attacks at some level uh, and at some point of investment into this attack 
So I think it's about just uh, making our best. So we as a technology uh, people, we, um, we we cannot be in this um, in this uh, um, you know doomed uh, mo mood that everything is uh, you know everything is lost. There's no 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 reason to to fight. I think we still need to do our best and use the best technologies for uh, cybersecurity and for for protecting um, tools that are available, and also understand what are the uh, adversaries uh, on the other end. Uh, who who wants our data? So I think this understanding at least helps us to um, approach good security. I think I can perhaps also just add something from Open Social's um, point of view, which is that we see a lot of our clients have communities that you now it's not the same information that is on Facebook um, in terms of their members' personal information. We have, uh, for example, the Diabetes Fund. Um, which is a community for people who suffer from diabetes type one. And, you know, on that community, you might find um, medical information or, or even more personal information than you, you might find on social media. Um, so in that sense, I would also say, you know, it maybe connects with your use case. There might be something um, shared on your community that you can actually um, protect uh, that, that is not already available um, in another data leak. And um, quickly to add on that, because Bram, you also mentioned uh, a little bit about this, but when when data leaks happen, you know, there's the, the damage to the members or the users, but also um, there are some long-term damages to the organization or the brand or the company. And can you maybe uh, speak a little bit to that? Yeah, so, so if you talk about Im impact on brands on, or organizations or, or, well, members, right? Like the, you're often talking about like trust. Um, what is the trust that people now have in Facebook? I'm not sure the, about the numbers, but like I think this has drastically dropped since, um, well, since a lot of like these leaks happened in 2019, uh, a couple of like big ones happened. Um, Cambridge Analytica, things like that. Like there is this trust level that you um, that you have with your members, and data leakage. Well, there there's high impact on this. So this will um, um, uh, there, there's always like an, like how do you deal with data leaks? Also has a, like a large influence on on how you um, how you can regain this trust, for example, and how big the impact is on your on your community or sorry, on your brand and your community, actually. Um, if, if you're leaking your whole database or if you're by accident leaking uh, uh, leaking a few email addresses uh, in, in, a, in a reply to all uh, email, for example, that is a different size of, of, uh, of data leak. So it will have a different impact on, on your organization or your community. Being transparent about this is always good. In any case, I think in the, I know at least by Dutch law, it's like mandatory to, uh, if you have a data leak, you have to report it immediately, which is, I think, very, very sane, uh, sane uh, law. Um, but yeah, having, having the transparency is gonna, gonna uh, impact yeah. uh, gain, regaining of trust. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think also transparency is a big, uh, big point here because all of <laughs> untrust to Facebook is it's not just because the data is leaking, because technically the platform is is secure. It's more about mm -hmm. how the company itself treat your data and what they do with this data. This is the the bigger uh, the bigger point. So it's really more about transparency and you know explaining what you do and what you don't do with with the data. And when this this trust at the user level is lost, it's it's very hard to regain it because. Um, um, naturally, people in the community tools um, they, they want to feel safe. They want to they, they want to feel that you know the company behind this tool is respecting them, respecting their data, respecting uh, security. And in this case, even if the incident happens, and incidents are inevitable, that's a, again as a cybersecurity expert, you know it's just inevitable. It's just the only difference is how transparent you are with your customers and users and how quickly you can react and and rebuild from this incident so 
this is very important and uh, uh, in my opinion this is one of the biggest assets that the community to have is this trust of their members Great. Um, I see we're almost out of time, so I quickly wanted to ask if there's anybody um, attending that has a question that they'd like to ask. We already had a very uh, nice question from Mark. Um, so if anybody else has a question, please, uh, you can even unmute if you want to ask, or you can just drop it in the chat. And in case there aren't any, I would already like to ask um, both of you if you have any final remarks or advice for organizations, community managers, site owners um, about keeping their members protected and their platform secure. So I, I would say like it's a final remark, like I think some of the so like, like in the end, like it's all about cybersecurity hygiene for a lot of the issues that we're talking about. Like if you go um, purchase a community from a company, for an organization, like you can, well, you obviously need to validate that they take security uh, and, and, and data privacy very, very serious. Um, so that that's one. On the other hand, like you have a lot of things that you have under your own control with indeed like not, not uh, uh, writing your password on on, um, on on a piece of paper, making sure it's strong, that you have two-factor authentication enabled wherever possible, um, but also that you take care of like, hey, what, what kind of data am I, for example, reporting out of the community? If we're talking about like uh, an, an analytics that you want to do on, on a specific set of data, like what data do you need and where are you storing this? And how do you process this? And, and is this also stored secure, right? Like if, if you do this on your local local uh, uh, laptop um, and it's not password protected, or, or if you're sending this to your phone, like there are a couple of things that you, uh, that you can think about, like that is relatively easy to solve if you take care of uh, what you want to do with this data and how you secure this, uh, you know, your devices in this case. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's an easy one uh, to, um, relatively easy one uh, between quotes uh, to take care of. Yeah, Igor? on top of that, uh, I think it's very good conclusion from Bram. On top of that, what I would like to add is um, um, also try to make people aware, uh, more aware of security, like community members. So uh, sometimes this can be done technically. For example, when you just impose a good security policy in the um, in the platform where users simply cannot set easy, easily guess full passwords or enforce two-factor authentication. So that's the technical part. But there is also a big awareness and educational part. So making people aware um, about cybersecurity hygiene and making them aware of the recent incidents and just educating them in a um in an understandable way in a way that they can grasp and any member can grasp is is also very important because at the end of the day uh, at, at any level cybersecurity is always a combination of people uh, processes and tools so these these three things they only they create a good cybersecurity so for site managers and community tools i think it's the the um, the formula is exactly the same. Great, thank you both. That was a very interesting and I think um, useful conversation. Um, yeah, I wanna thank you, Bram, and also uh, Igor for joining. And for the people who are still with us, you can get in touch with either of them. Yeah. And I think that is it for today. Thank you very much for joining. And thank you so much for presenting. Have a good day further. Thank you. Likewise. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.